I remember when I was talking about the, the six and eight presses, uh, I used a technique called 30 for two. Remember, bet paid 28. I cut 30 out, gave two to the box person off the bet. That way I had my large denomination check out. You'll see this principle uh, all over the place in this game. Uh, let's go ahead and start with just a simple one. Uh, here we have 27 across, the point is 10. What are the four hits? It normally pays $9. So we cut $9 out and we give it to the player. Now, well, the player has a whole bunch of white in there. We can use a technique called 10 for 1. We cut out 10, ask the player to drop us a dollar. He drops us a dollar. We hand him his payoff out, pick the dollar up, go right in our working stack. That's 10 for 1. We took a $9 payoff. Use a technique to get a higher denomination checkout as part of the payoff. Now, why, why would you need that? When would you use this? Well, sometimes if a number hits, the player likes to press a number, likes to either press that number or likes to press another number or a combination of numbers. So in this case, we had nine. And the player said, well, I want to press the four and the five. Well, we got nine dollars. We have to ask him for a dollar anyway. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. So rather than getting the dollar, putting the five here, giving that to the box, bringing that out to put on the five, we're going to eliminate one step by making it part of the payoff. We cut 10 for one, the player's going to drop us a dollar, we give it to the box, and now we have the checks we need to press two numbers. Or if they wanted to press the whole four, up to 15, we can do that. Now, the same thing can happen on the six and eight. Now, yes, this pays seven, and you could do 10 for three, but like I mentioned before, why eat up all the white checks out of the rail when that's what the majority of your tokes are? We're gonna let the player keep those. Now, let's say we had uh, 12 on the six and eight. Now it pays 14. Now we're within a dollar. We can do another technique called 15 for one. Same thing, instead of cutting out 14, ask the player to drop us a dollar, we take out 15. When would we use this? If the player has a boatload of white in the rail, or they might even just drop a dollar down without us even asking. If that happens, we're going to assume that they want 15 for one. So we cut out the 15, hand it off, lock up the one dollar. Uh, we got $10 on the four, we use the technique. Same as 10 for one, we could do 20 for two. Okay, so we're cutting out $18. We just cut out 20. Player drops us two. Let's say the point was eight. The player said, I want to press the four, five, nine, and 10, $5 each. Using 20 for two, we have four red checks. So we can go ahead and press them all. Now, take a look at the four again. This keeps popping up on the four and 10 a lot. Right now we have $15 on the four. 15 pays 27. Most players, when that number hits, will either leave it the way it is, or they'll go ahead and press it up. And if they press it up, they're going to buy it. Most will buy it for a quarter. We know 15 pays 27. We can cut out 27 like that. That's fine. They want to buy it for a quarter. We keep a dollar, give them the rest. And that becomes their buy. You have $25 dollar commission. A better way to do that. Let's bring out 27 with the green. Keep the dollar. Dollar goes here. Now we got what we need. Now granted, this isn't a 10 for 1 or a 15 for 1 or a 20 for 2 situation, but it is the principle of getting a large check out when you need it. Now, you remember with the 6 and the 8, once I got to 24, I used 30 for 2. Uh, there's another technique that's used a lot called 26 for 5. And you use it any time you have a bet that pays $21. What bet's pay $21? Well, let's the points 4. And we've got $18 on the 8, $18 on the 6, 15 on the 5, and the 9. They all pay 21. Let's say the five hits, and the player says, well, I, want to, I want to go to a quarter. We can cut out 21. We can keep 10. 
put it on top, Doesn't hand them the rest. Now we've got 25, which we would hand into the box and replace with a quarter. But we want to bring the green check out, ooh, more group shame, as part of the payoff. So we're going to bring out 26 for five. Now look at the difference. There's 21, 26. The difference between these two is a nickel. That's why it's called 26 for five. We bring out 26, we owe the bank $5. So we'll press into a quarter. First we have to pay the bank back. There's the five we owe the bank. The other 11 goes to the player. And we have a large check that we need. That's an application of 26 for five on the five. And it works just as well for the nine. Now how does this help us with uh, $18, six or eight? Well, let's say the player wants to uh, either press it to six or press it to 30 or do a full press. Remember, a full press is double. 18 doubled is 36. You can cut out 21 and hand off the cap and stack it all up and we're right where we need to be. We have $36 out there. And there's nothing wrong with that. That works just fine. Another way to do this. I just busted out four hours ago. For the full press. Busted out four hours. Cut out 26. Now we need to end up with 36, right? Pick up the bet with the outside hand. Drop cut two red under the quarter. Get the rest off. Stacked up. Proper cap. And we're there. That's what we need. Or. Let's say they just want to press it to 30. They don't want to go all the way to 36. Cut that out. Same thing. Grab a dollar. Put it on the bet. Drop one nickel in the thumb. Hand it off. And you got your 30. And that's where you can use 26 for 5 on the 5, 6, 8, 9, any bet that pays $21.